Welcome back to Trad Rod and Custom. I'm Oliver, and I have been trying for a little while to figure out a good way to motorize my bead roller. I have the Woodward Fab Super Bead, which is similar to the Eastwood Bead Roller. It's kind of similar to the Harbor Freight Bead Roller. It's, it's a little thicker, though. It's a little nicer made, but uh, I want to get it motorized, and I've been trying to figure out a good way to do that cheap because money is a commodity in this recession, and I think... I came up with a good idea, so let's get into it. So I found some motors on Amazon that were about $130, $140, and those intrigued me. They looked a lot like the motors that Eastwood uses in their motorized kit, but for a lot less money. And then I started thinking about it. I've tried using a drill with a cog, a, a chain, and like a bicycle chain and sprocket. I've tried using an impact. I've tried using a number of things to motorize my bead roller, and a lot of them sort of work, but they don't really work that well. And I started thinking about it. I was laying in bed one night, and I saw this in my head. And this is a Cabela's 440-pound electric cable hoist. Now, this is something I got as a Christmas gift from my brother a few years ago, and I just never got it up. Two years ago, I think. Never got it up. It, it's awesome. It would be great to have up for a for a cable hoist for lifting an animal. They're not real expensive. They're like a hundred bucks, hundred twenty bucks. Uh, but I already have this one, so I think I'm going to give this a shot. See if I can make this work for what we want to do. If not, I'll just convert it back into this and use it for its intended purpose. If it works, then I'll buy another one of these. But I have a feeling this is going to be great. It's got a four hundred and forty pound uh, lifting cap capacity on it. Now, if you watch Mad Ginger Customs, he he modifies his with a winch. And this is kind of like a winch. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a hoist. It's got this built-in cable and it's got a forward and back switch. So it means the motor is reversible. It also only plugs into a regular 110 outlet, which is great. I'm thinking I might be able to make some kind of a foot pedal that works as a forward and reverse. I won't have a speed control. So I'll be stuck with the speed it's going at. The first thing we need to do is get this carriage off, get this spool off, because we're not gonna use the cable and we're not gonna use any of that. We really don't need this thing either. This is a kill for when this gets coiled all the way up. It kills the motor with this little kill switch. Um, you can probably just lose this, because I don't think, you don't see any purpose in having it. But with it off, it, it depresses this button you can hear it, and that kills the motor. So with it off, it shouldn't, it should just be operational. But anyway, let's get into it, let's get this plate off. We might end up reusing this carriage to mount it because it's got some threaded holes and it's it's all obviously already fits the motor. But. So the shaft just gets carried in this bushing here in the end, typically. That's interesting. So we may end up cutting the, the mouth of this open to allow it to mate to our uh, allow it to mate to our bead roller. Okay. Maybe we'll take the cable off and leave the spool on. See here, this thing is held in with this doodad. Take that out, take that out. out. And just like that, that part is free. 
Let's go ahead and try some power here. Let's see what this thing does. Okay. I would say that our speed's okay though. That's interesting. I would say that our speed is okay. So I think I'm okay proceeding with this, even though it's not a variable speed setup, which is a little disappointing. Drill motors, that's part of why I tried to use a drill motor. Drill motors are, are a DC motor, I believe, and DC motors can be hooked up to a pedal and used in variable speed. Sewing machines are DC motors. This obviously is not. This must be an AC motor. I do think that the speed will be okay. It's not real fast. I think it's going to be okay, but be aware of that. Be aware that you, you need to make sure you have a motor that works with a variable speed pedal if that is what you're intending on doing. I do think that what I'll do now, instead of making this a toggle, is I'm going to rig this into a type of a rocker, a rocker pedal, one that has a forward and a reverse. Just seems like the right way to do it. It's nice to be hands free and uh, it's already here, forward and reverse. Just need to make a pedal that will actuate this and modify this thing so it'll, it'll work that way. I want to take this thing off. Looks like it's just got a little, a little clip here. See how hard it's going to be to remove. Let's see. Going, going, going. There she goes. Little horseshoe clip. Slide that thing through there, and off she comes. Stitch the spring here. Just kind of using the tools that happen to be sitting in front of me. Let's see. Okay. That's off. We'll hang on to that just in case we are going back on what we're trying to do here at some point. Although I don't think we're going to be. I need to figure out how this thing goes on. Pops this thing off. Oh, yeah, there she goes. Spool off. So now we can see our shaft. It's just a hex shaft. I think a hex shaft should be pretty easy to adapt because we can use a socket. Sacrificial socket. I keep all the old junk sockets that aren't really high value. You never know when you're going to need one to hammer on to weld to something to make a tool. I just, I don't throw them away. I keep a bucket full. And what we'll do is we'll find a six point, not a 12 point. Ooh, 16 millimeter. That's a pretty dang good fit, 16 millimeter. So we got a few options here. We can shorten this shaft up. I'm a little on the fence about modifying this thing too much because I really want to make sure I like it before I torch it. Being that it's not 
a variable speed motor. I'm pretty sure though. Okay. As you can see, I've tried a few different methods here for uh, doing this. This is a V-belt method that I tried using this heavy duty drill. But I think that we're on the right track here. I am gonna have to cut out the mouth of this thing, which will leave this shaft unsupported, but I think that'll be okay. I also do think I'm gonna cut the shaft down. You can tell the way this is going to work is this is gonna be suspended out here. We're gonna cut this off and weld on something that fits this. And then it'll get welded to this thing. This will be slip. So it'll have the ability to move even though it doesn't really need it. And then we'll cut this shaft down so that it'll be about right there. And I think we'll be okay for speed and everything. I think it's going to work just fine. Okay. As you can see, I got the mouth of this cut open. I did that off camera. Figured you didn't need to watch. I also cut the shaft down. I cut it in half pretty much. That fits right on there now. Go ahead and get this thing seated back in here. The idea is shortening up this shaft brings it all closer together. We want the motor hanging out as little as possible when this is all said and done. <sighs> Try to show you guys what we're aiming at here. Something about like that. Maybe a little bit closer because we're going to cut this socket down. But about like that. And then we'll have forward and reverse at one set speed, which seems to be the, about the right speed for this thing. I've spent some time thinking about it. And I think it's about the right speed for what I'm after. So it'll be a, pretty close to that. So then we're going to have to build a platform off of this to come out here and support this thing. And it'll probably need to be gusseted so that it doesn't flex. I figured out which orientation this likes to go on at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. There it goes. And I'm going to mark it to drill for a set screw. We'll cut down this socket. And then we will weld them together. And then we've got our joint. Now that we got the hole drilled, we're going to go ahead and uh, tap the hole. For our set screw action. Okay. Not a lot of threads, but we got threads in there. Slides right on there. Put your set screw in. That thing's not going anywhere. Awesome. All right. On to the next step. Okay. 
add on a piece of steel. It needs to go right up here. And I'm gonna notch it so that I can slide it around to weld it. We'll do something like that. Do that on the top and bottom, and then we'll uh, slide it on there and weld it, and then we'll figure out a gusset for the bottom so it can't do any of this. But we're cooking along. Okay. Now we got that notched. It's gonna slide on just like that. Oh, it needs a little, needs a little more, but it's pretty close. But anyway, you get the idea. It's gonna slide on flush with the bottom there, and uh, that will also help us keep it true to this, is by using the bottom. But I'm gonna file that a little and get a little more room, and then we'll start welding this thing on there. All right, you get this thing tacked on here and keep rolling. Okay, that's what that looks like. This thing's gonna set right up there. It's gonna have to get elevated a little, but not much. Actually, it doesn't even feel like it's gonna flex. Although I still think I'm gonna add a gusset just cause. Anyway, making progress. Hopefully you guys were kind of following along there what was happening, but um, and just so you guys know, I have decided to go ahead and put a gusset in here. I'm probably not going to do it in video, but I'm going to run something from here to here just, just to give it a little extra support. It doesn't have any give right now, but I, I don't want to take any chances. We'll be in good shape. It's lined up perfectly right now. So, I'll fire up the welder again and uh, tack this thing where it goes and then we'll weld it on. Okay. With that tack weld, let's go ahead and fire it up, make sure she wants to spin.
that motor off and we can weld the, uh, the risers on. And then we can weld the carriage to the risers. Now we're gonna have to put the motor back on, bolt it back on uh, before we can weld the carriage because we need that carriage to be exactly in the right spot. I'll tell you what, I think we are in business here. I think we're in business. I think it's time for a test piece. Okay, let's go ahead and test this thing for torque and what have you. I think this is 20 gauge. Let's just see what she does. Wow. Wow. <laughs> like it's not even there. That's crazy. Oh, set screw slipped on us. I got that thing torqued down though. That is uh I got torqued down enough that it's actually leaving an imprint at the edge of the die on the sheet metal. Just got to tighten up that set screw. But that's, that's working. That's a deep bead. Let's get this thing back where it's supposed to be. Hmm. Well, what happens when you cut a <laughs> cut a slot off center? It doesn't really work too well, does it? Okay. Well, I will fix that. And uh, chiffy here. Okay, got her back up and running. Put that set screw up with a. I got a better one in there. Doesn't contact. I like the speed. I like the forward and reverse. I just need to make this into a pedal so I can toggle it forward and reverse, I think. I don't think I really want to one-hand it. So, although I can kind of hold it, but for bigger panels, I think I'm going to want to toggle. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I, I call this a success works great it has tons of torque speeds just right if you're if you're not going to do a variable speed setup for 120 bucks really wasn't all that hard to get this thing set up and, it, and the speed's just perfect perfect for me i i cannot imagine really needing to go slower maybe on corners but uh, i kind of doubt it and and still i yeah i just don't think so because you can you can kind of you know stutter it around corners if you're doing a really tight corner which i don't tend to do a lot of that but uh i'm happy with it it worked out tons of torque rips right through it hope you guys enjoyed the content hope you enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe and i'll catch you guys on the next one later